Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. On today's episode, we ask, are we appreciating Eric Carlson, what he's doing enough? Plus, my reaction to going to the Barracuda game and why you need to go to a Barracuda game. And recapping the Sharks 4-3 to three loss to the Lightning. So all that and more. On today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin and San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, you can subscribe on YouTube as well. And today, I want to talk about Eric Carlson. And I know he is going to be a lightning rod for many, many Sharks fans because of his contract, his injury history, all that fun stuff. A lot of people equate Eric Carlson's arrival to the leaving of fan favorite Joe Pavelski, which is incorrect. It's another winger that they signed for a seven by seven. But anyway, Carlson's not the reason Joe Pavelski left. But a lot of fans, they just, you know, they they, they look at the $11 million or $11.5 million contract and they are like, well, where's the production? What has he done for me lately? And, you know, he makes a mistake. And that's all they can point to. And, you know, he, he just he doesn't have the same love that a guy like Brent Burns, who made his fair share of defensive mistakes and provided plenty of offense and, you know, never got the same love and attention that Brent Burns has. But what Eric Carlson is doing right now is insane to start this season. And, you know, through 11 games, he is 11 points, six goals, five assists, leading all NHL defensemen and points. He, and I know Sharks have played, they've played a couple more games than most teams right now, especially with a trip to Europe. They are that they're up to 11 games. While most teams are, you know, there's a couple teams at 10, but most are in that kind of eight, nine games range. So a couple more games for, for Carlson, but uh, what he is doing right now is, is insane. And on, especially a team that is starving for goals. So Carlson has 11 points. The Sharks have 24 goals on this season. That's that's a little bit over two goals a game. Not a big math guy, but it's a little bit over two goals a game. So they've scored 24 goals in 11 games this year. And Carlson has either scored or assisted on 11 of those. So if you do the math, I don't know, I'm sure there's a name for this, but I, I just kind of nicknamed it the, the contribution rate. So how what percentage of your points are going towards the t- team's total goal. So right now, Carlson has a 45.8% percentage contribution. So, or sorry, for, yeah, 45.8. So he has contributed to 45.8 of all of the Sharks' goals this year by either scoring them himself. So he has six, they have 24. I can do that math. That is 25%. He, he himself has scored 25% of the Sharks goals this year. That is basically him and Nico Sturm have scored more than half of the Sharks goals. Nico Sturm, the eye of the Sturm. So I was kind of curious. I was like, this is, this is crazy, right? Like how are some of the other like league leaders, some of the best players in the world, how are their quote unquote contribution rates compared to other compared to their team. So I looked first looked at the fours, looked at some of the top scorers. Connor McDavid so far this season. 18 points, nine goals, nine assists. Um that's that's pretty good. Connor McDavid, we know he's a very good player. Pretty good. Pretty good at the game. But he so the Oilers are third in goals at 34. So again the Sharks tied 24th with 24 goals. The Oilers, 10 more goals, and they played a couple games less. He's contributed 53% of their goals. So by either scoring 
the goal itself or having assists on it. Connor McDavid, literally the best player in the world. 53%. That's insane. David Proshnock. He's pretty good too, right? I made a, a very compelling argument earlier this summer that the Sharks should trade for Pasternak, um, which was a lot of a, a really fun talk in the middle of the summer. But 17 goals, or 17 points, sorry, excuse me. 17 points this year, 7 goals, 10 assists. The Bruins, first in goals, 38 goals this year. They are out, and they're, they're, they're kicking ass right now, excuse the language, um, to start the season. 44.7% contribution rate. Not as good as Eric Carlson. David Bosch, great player. Amazing player. You could argue Carlson means more to his team right now. Leon Dreisaitl. Pretty good player himself, right? 16 points. He has four goals, 12 assists. Again, the Oilers third in goals. 30 with 34, 47% contribution rate. Again, Leon Dreisaitl, one of the top five NHL players in the world. And then Jesper Bratt. So I got this one before they played the Columbus game, and I'm going to be too lazy to go check it out right now. Um, Devils, a little bit slow start with the goal scoring, but Bratt, he's 13 points. I uh, have three goals, 10 assists. Devils, again, this was before the Blue Jackets game that was happened Sunday. I got the numbers, and I'm, I was too lazy to go back and get them. Twenty, So they had 24 goals, 54% contribution. But again, they, they've kind of played a, a few less games than most other uh, teams. So, But Eric Carlson is up there with, like, Leon Dreisaitl, David Pasternak, Conor McDavid, of how important he is to his team, right? And then I looked at other, like, just defensemen. The top scoring defenseman. So again, Eric Carlson, the top scoring defenseman right now. Rasmus Stalin with the uh, with the Buffalo Sabres off to an amazing start this year. And he's got 10 points, five goals, five assists. The Sabres right now are tied ninth in goals at 29, 34.5% contribution rate. Again, Justin Falk. Um Blues, they've only played seven games, but he's having a great start to his season. He's got nine points, three goals, six assists. Um, they've played seven games, the Blues, and they've only scored uh, 18 goals right now. So little little shocker. So Falk, though, 50% contribution rate. That, that's Justin Falk, very important to the Blues. And then um, Brandon Montar of uh, the Panthers. They're ninth tied ninth in goal scored at 29. He's got eight points, right? Three goals, five assists, 27 and a half percent contribution rate. So other than Justin Falk, who again, small, I, I, you know, he's played seven games right now. Eric Carlson just means much more for his team's offense than these other guys, especially these other defensemen. And then I was just curious because I'm that type of guy. Brent Burns is Norris season. With his 29 goals, 47 assists, 76 points. The Sharks that season scored 219 goals, which is a little bit below average of the NHL average, but 34.7% contribution rate. Brent Burns literally won the Norris that year. And he was he can either score a goal or got an assist on 34, almost 35% of the Sharks goals that year. Eric Carlson again right now. It's 11 games. He's in on 40, almost 46%. And then I was really curious. And I went way back in the archives and looked at Joe Thornton the year he was traded to the Sharks and won the heart. So, and I just looked at where he was at with the Sharks, just this time with the Sharks. So he got traded end of, you know, end of November. And I looked from his first game on with their, his stats. Since he came to San Jose, Joe Thornton had 20 goals, 70, 72 assists, which is ridiculous, 92 points. Uh, the Sharks scored 202 goals after Joe Thornton's arrival. Joe Thornton, in the year he won the heart, he was the most valuable player. His contribution rate was 45.5%. He Joe Thornton contributed 45.5% of the Sharks' goals that season. Eric Carlson right now is at 45.8% contribution rate. 
you could Joe, this is how important Eric Carlson is to the Sharks right now. He is the engine of their offense. And yes, he's going to make mistakes. No player is perfect. He's going to make defensive mistakes. That is because if he doesn't provide the offense, who else is providing the offense right now on a team that cannot score? Again, they are barely over two goals a game. Eric Carl, what Eric Carlson is doing for the Sharks right now is MVP caliber. Again, Eric Carlson's performance is MVP caliber right now. Where would the Sharks be without Eric Carlson right now? They would be Coyotes, burn it down. This is ugly type of situation. So that was my Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson is not getting the love he deserves right now. Anyway, before we get into the actual uh, lightning game, let's take a quick break. Talk to you guys about our friends over at Bet Online. You guys know Bet Online, your number one source for betting football. And now with the start of basketball season, they have you covered. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, in depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wager information with live betting and absolute scores on every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing and golf so head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more bet online where the game starts okay so let's actually get into the uh hurricane the the lightning game so the hurricanes the eye of the storm um so i was actually at the game a uh, really fun game especially the nice saturday matinee game um crowd was really into it the lunch boxes were really cool um really fun game so I did only stay for the first two periods because I wanted to get over to the start of the Barracuda game because um, William Eklund, et cetera. I'll get into the Barracuda game at the end. But, you know, I still went back. I watched the the the, the last period of the game. And this is a game that the Sharks are going to feel really frustrated that they did not win this because they, they kind of went toe-to-toe with – the lightning for a lot of this game. And, you know, I, I was with my buddy Jay from locked on blue jackets. And before the game, we kind of, we made a joke. Okay. What's, what is the over under on shots for James Reimer? And we set it at 40 and I was like, I'll take the over please. But the sharks, again, they went toe to toe with the lightning in this game. And they're, they're going to kind of kick themselves that they weren't able to win this game. So Let's kind of dig into the the numbers. So again, Carlson scored twice. Nico Sturm scored once. Um, giving up a goal with with less than a minute left is just absolutely heartbreaking. And you would have hoped if they got into the overtime, they Carlson could have dug up some more magic as he's as he's been able to do this season. But unfortunately, that was not the way it happened. But the Sharks and the Lightning five on five. 47 shots uh attempts for the lightning 41 attempts for the sharks so they, they again they went toe to toe with them actual shark shots five on five was 22 to 23 in favor of the lightning you know the high danger chances were 11 to 12 in favor of the lightning like these are really close expected goals for the lightning had a little bit better they were at a three 3.04 expected goals for while the sharks had a 2.42 like but the big thing was the Sharks special teams is really kind of what made the difference. And that that's kind of been the David Quinn formula of if we can just hang around at five on five, we think our penalty kill is going to be better than your power play. And we think we can squeak out some, some power play goals. And that's kind of what the Sharks did in this game. And they, they got really close to pulling off a, a really big win against the lightning. And you know, looking at the, the four lines, so we had uh, Sveshnikov, Hurdle, and Meyer played together. They played almost 13 minutes of time on ice at five on five. Um, Nieto, Kator, Barabanov played almost 12 minutes of time on ice at five on five. Um, Benino was back. Um, and it was Benino, Cunnin, and Nico Sturm. They played about nine, a little over nine minutes at, at five on five. And then Lindblom, uh, Lawrence, and LeBanc, uh, a little over six minutes at five on five. And the hurdle Meyer line and Sveshnikov 
was really great. They had 17 shot attempts uh, compared to 12 allowed. Actual shots on goal was seven to eight in favor of the Lightning. But they were, you know, we know Timo Meyer. He's going to shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, he doesn't care if there's someone in the way, you know. And they got a, a fair amount of, um, they got like all the offensive zone starts, which is what you wanted to do, especially against a, a, a Lightning team. Put your best players on the ice in the offensive zone and see if you can try to generate some offense so they had seven offensive zone starts one neutral zone two defensive zone um the couture line okay um they only were able to generate five uh shot attempts while they gave up nine actual shots on goal was two to four um but they they definitely got more of the defensive zone start they only had one offensive zone start four neutral zone and then six defensive zones so that couture line is your defensive shutdown unit so and they you know did a, a solid job especially against a very uh potent lightning offense only giving up they had four scoring chances for themselves but only gave up four scoring chances and you know they the couture line generated three high danger chances while only giving up two so not too bad again the shooting we know with couture that's that line they just, for some reason, aren't able to generate as much shots. But they're giving up shots, but they're not giving up. Like, at least, especially in this game, they weren't giving up a lot of... If they're giving something up, they were kind of at least making up for it by, by generating their own offense. So, um, yes. And then the Benino Sturm uh, kind of in line kind of got their lunch taken from them. They, uh, they had six shot attempts for and 14 allowed. They did score the one goal and gave up a goal as well. Um, Actual shots was three to six. Uh, Sturm he got he got a, 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 a it was a nice shot, but you you would think Vaz, Vaz, Vazileski would have, would save that more times than not. So um, mostly neutral zone starts two six and four, and then uh, the Lawrence Durant line six shot attempts. They gave up six shot attempts, so had actual four shots on goal. Then you know. Pretty nice expected goals for it, 0.71, so which was second. Um, yeah, so they when they were out there, they made the best most of their chances. So, you know, but again, it's 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 always it, this team has to be so perfect for everything to go right for them to win a game right now. And they just they there's just so little margin of error. And you saw how important Carlson was again, score two goals. That second, the power play goal where he shoots and he just turns because it's no, he knows it's going like he's already celebrating before everybody else on the team, just is awesome. But you know, again, we're we're starting to see this top line how much they mean to the shark. You know, they're not getting on the score sheet as much, but they're doing all the little things. And you know, we we saw Timo get a goal um, Tuesday night, but it's got it's. It, it feels like the dam should be breaking. And we saw this last year with Nick Benino where it took him like 20 games before he started scoring. And you're hoping that the, the, the dam should be breaking. And the duck, the Sharks who play the Ducks who have been God awful this year. So hopefully that's the game where the dam breaks for the Sharks so they can, they can finally get some of these top line guys scoring. So frustrating because you felt like the Sharks should have won this game with the way they were playing and kind of hanging in there, especially against a much superior Tampa team, but that's what good teams do, man. They, they find a way to finish and just the sharks right now just aren't a good team. And you know, that's, that's why the lightning have been to the past three Stanley cups and they've won two of them. So yeah, um, we'll see. We'll, we'll talk about the ducks here. Yeah. The ducks, the sharks just play the ducks twice here the next week. So hopefully they can try to make up, try to get some points there. We'll see. But um, let's talk about, the Barracuda. So, um, but before we do that, I uh, want to let you guys know, of course, about uh, the Locked On Game to Game. Thank you, of course, for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Now for your second listen, go check out the Game to Game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game has you covered from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. So, you want to get a nice little recap of what happened the night before, you know, all the games are going to be uh played go check out the game to game on the locked on nhl feed 
they've got you covered. Nice little, you know, minute breakdown from each host on, on what happened to their team and kind of the biggest takeaway from the game. So locked on uh, game to game available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right. So the Barracuda, if you live anywhere close to San Jose, if you're in the Bay Area and you have a chance, go to a Barracuda game. I promise you, you will have a blast. It's like 10 bucks to park. Tickets aren't expensive. They're, you know, um, you could you could walk in the door. Like the the arena is it's basically just the lower bowl of, of the SAP center, but smaller. The arena, it's five thousand people. You can probably you can a ticket's gonna cost you like 15 bucks, ten dollars a park, and you're going to have a blast. I promise you. I had so much fun. Right? I mean <laughs> The game, the game started with a line brawl, which was absolutely insane because you never see line brawls anymore. But the game started with a line brawl and Jasper Weatherby getting the whole like bottom, the fourth line getting kicked out was just hilarious. But Jasper Weatherby in the middle of a line brawl is something I did not expect to see on my my bucket list that day. But I did. Um, but like the, the actual in-game experience, you're right there. You're right on top of the players like you can see, you can hear everything that's going on. Um not there is no bad seats in this place it's literally you you could sit anywhere and have enjoy have a great time at this game but and two right now especially because the barracuda they there's a great blend of young players to be excited about right right now Eklund and bordolo i know they're they're probably not going to be there for the rest of all season but if you get a chance to go you can go see them and like be up close and, and watch them play if Eklund Bordalo, you have Tristan Robbins who is coming out like a man on fire. You have Daniel Gushin who finally scored. You know, you have Jasper Weatherby, Scott Reedy, like all these guys who are probably gonna, you know, be your next core guys and guys like Bordalo and Eklund who are your future, like future, future guys here. You know, you can go watch uh Hadika, find actually find where Hadika is, you know. E2 Makanemi looks he looks great. And I know he gave up three goals and they lost in a shootout four to three. But yeah, Makanemi looks looks great, man. He he really promising with him. But and then but I think they did a really good job of getting adults in the room. You know, Andrew you know, an adult in the room. He's been there, done that. You know, Seuss, CJ Seuss, been there, done that. Derek Pugliot, like he has he has been the Sharks best defenseman pairing him with Ryan Merkley like they've been they've been great Merkley has looked amazing with with the Barracuda and again he's going to be Eric Carlson light he's going to do stuff offensively that's super fun and watch and he's going to make defensive mistakes but that's why you have an adult like Derek Pouliot who can kind of just wrangle the kids for a little bit but it's not that expensive it's a good chance to go see some of these young players and guys who you're going to be rooting for, for hopefully a long time. And um, this, the bear, like the Barracuda didn't come to me and ask, this is my enjoyment. I had, I honestly think I had more fun at the Barracuda game than I did at the Sharks game and had a blast at the Sharks game. It's awesome watching Eric Carlson do Eric Carlson things, but the Barracuda there, there's an energy and stuff. And I know it's, you're watching the game and sometimes it, you know it's can be a little sluggish and stuff like that but right now like the product on the ice from a barracuda standpoint it's very this is the best product we've seen from the barracuda in a long long time so go if you have a chance go i promise you you will have a blast the arena again is beautiful there's not a bad seat there's plenty of places to eat there's the bar right behind the goal. Like you can go and just hang out there and, and watch the game um, or and just kind of wander around. And I promise you go to a Barracuda game. You're going to have a, if you, especially you're like me, you got a family buying a bunch of tickets to the shark game is like expensive. Well, they're not, the tickets aren't as expensive right now, but like, you know, you got to buy tickets for the kids and everything. Like it's a little bit cheaper. And you're going to have a great time, I promise you. So, all right, that's going to do it for me. Um, 
recap eric carlson is awesome appreciate him sharks kicking themselves that they didn't beat the lightning and they probably should have and go to a barracuda game you're gonna have a blast i promise you um all right that's gonna do it for me be back tomorrow get you guys ready for the ducks game um quack quack so uh game i honestly think the sharks should blow the ducks out of the water the way the ducks have been playing right now so um very interesting for the tank battle but we'll see eric carlson is gonna be the best player on the ice and it's not a bit not much of a question there so um yeah, that's good for me today. Make sure you guys are following along on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Locked on Sharks. Sorry, I didn't have clips from the weekend. I was actually at the game. So um, also shout out to Mia and shout out to the listeners that came up and uh, came up to me over the weekend. You know, if you saw me at the at either game and came up and said hi and, you know, uh, bought me a beer, all that fun stuff. You guys are the best. It's like I was telling my wife just how crazy it is that people just walking up to me and um you know like oh yeah i love the show etc cetera, etc cetera. it's just insane so i appreciate every one of you guys uh did that uh shout out to mia mia you're the best um so great day with you mia um yes go listen locked on sharks wherever you get podcasts apple spotify all those places um youtube go watch me there you can see my ceiling fan um, right now as I'm recording in my bedroom. And then, um, yeah, follow me on Twitter at my fry hole for pro Eric Carlson takes because Eric Carlson's amazing and you should just accept it and be back tomorrow for the ducks until then. Oh, and then also one more thing. Uh, go check out locked on sports today podcast, the biggest stories of the day plus instant reactions big game recaps and the take of the day available on the odyssey app youtube and wherever you get podcasts until tomorrow bye friends